Hello everyone and welcome back to the semi-finals of the FIDE Grand Prix, it's Wei Yi versus David Navarra, they are battling it out to see who will face Yanni Pomnici in the finals of the FIDE Grand Prix. So the two classical games between the two of them have been drawn and the first game where uh, Navarra had the white pieces ended in a draw and this is the second game of the Rapids, so something might have happened here. And we also have a very nice photo uh, of uh, this moment, well not of this moment, it's a photo of the previous game where Navarra had the white pieces, there we have it. So let's just enjoy that for a moment. You can see both players are in uh, in in good spirits. You know, ready ready to fight. Uh, very very excited to be here. So uh, let's let's just enjoy that. And uh, now let us check out the game. Uh, this photo, as uh, like every photo uh, we've shown from the FIDE Grand Prix, is courtesy of Nikki Riga, official photographer. So uh, let's check out the game. Wei Yi with the white pieces opens with knight to f3. The Reti opening is on the board. We have d5 and b3. Uh, the Nimzol Larsen attack. Bishop to f5. Black uses this opportunity to uh, develop his light square bishop, which is uh, more often than not uh, a difficulty for black. Bishop to b2 and now e6. We have d3 by Wei Yi, h6 and knight b to d2. Uh, we have knight to f6, uh, just continuing development, and g3, Wei Yi will now fianchetto the other bishop as well. c5, uh, and now comes knight to e5, an excellent outpost for the knight, and here bishop to e7 is a known move, uh, but uh, knight b to d7 is what Navarra plays, and it is as of move 7 that we have a completely new game. So the knight on e5 is being challenged, and now e4. So what can black do here? Uh, you obviously don't gain anything by capturing, so bishop back to h7. Uh, we have knight captures on d7, queen captures on d7, and now bishop to g2. Fianchetto in the light square bishop and preparing to castle king side. We have queen back to d8, and this is a really weird moment of the game. Uh, one would imagine that you would just continue bishop to e7, castles king side, and well, so something uh, in, in those lines, or maybe even d4 to uh, make the uh, black, uh, white's dark square bishop useless for a while, but here queen to d8 by Navarra. And I I didn't give it much thought, but I, I did give it some thought, and I really don't see the uh, well not the well the importance of this move. It's just uh, maybe if you wanted to remaneuver the knight to e5, although that I don't see that happening, or maybe if you wanted uh, the queen to be guarding the knight, so if bishop captures, you can capture with the queen, so maybe you can develop the bishop this way, uh, but then again, you can't do to e5, so queen queen to d8 is a real mystery, and uh, Wei Yi uh, takes good advantage of this mystery, he plays e captures on d5, e captures, and now queen e2 check, now the point is, uh, if you block with the queen, let's say queen e7, just bishop captures on f6, you remove the defender of the d5 square, G, uh, G captures, now after captures, captures, you eliminate the d5 pawn as well, and now you're up a pawn, and black's pawn structure is all messed up, uh, should be a winning winning game for white. So after queen e2 check, we have bishop to e7, uh, and now bishop captures on f6, uh, ruining black's pawn structure, but on the other hand, uh, black does keep the bishop pair. And here, Wei Yi just castles, he's not afraid of the semi-open uh, g file, as g3 is already here, and the light square bishop will be very helpful in defending the white king. We have bishop to f5 now. Uh, uh, getting the bishop back into the game, also maybe now the, it wouldn't be that awful to have the queen on d7, it's it's a real mystery why the queen to d8 was played. Uh, but okay, we have rook 8 to e1, now putting pressure along the e-file, and now bishop to e6. Now the bishop has uh, uh, come out of the, the cage again, and now it's nicely protecting the, the black king. But queen to h5, and already uh, this introduces the threat from the thumbnail, rook captures on e6, of of course, is the threat as uh, you will not be able to recapture the f pawn is pinned. So, queen back to d7 now. Really weird stuff happening here. Uh, the, the queen returns, uh, you know, where where the, the queen should have been all along. Uh, but feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out how to continue this attack with white while I give you a couple of seconds. 
so for those of you uh, who were able to do it, congratulations, as the hint was in the thumbnail. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook captures on e6. Still, it doesn't matter that the queen defends it, because now you can see that both the queen and the bishop attack uh, the d5 pawn, and after bishop captures on d5, the f7 will be under attack. So queen captures and bishop captures on d5. We have queen to d7 again, the queen returns to d7, and now bishop captures on f7. Uh, probably... Uh, it's more precise than queen captures on f7 because this allows the king to kind of wiggle out. White is, of course, still better, but after rook to e1, you can go uh, rook to f8, push back the queen, queen h5, king c7, and maybe, just maybe, you will be able to uh, prolong this, uh, perhaps, if white will not play uh, perfect move, then maybe you will be able to survive. So that's why bishop captures on f7, the queen will be more useful on h5. Uh, we have king to d8. If king to f8, then you just go rook e1, and uh, neither of the rooks is ever uh, seeing the, the, the light of day. So after bishop captures on f7, we have king to d8, and now uh, rook to e1. You have to bring the rook into the game. King to c7, of course you want to bring the rook into the game. And the bishop to e6 now. We have queen to d8, and now knight to c4, bringing the knight into the game. And now the question is, can you play b5 here to, uh, to force the knight back? But then you, you would get the bishop to d5. And now, okay, if you capture the knight, then bishop captures rook, and you cannot recapture because of rook captures on e7 with check. So here you would have to go rook c8, and then we'd have queen to f7, again with a double attack on the bishop, rook to e8, and now knight to a5, uh, introducing the threat of rook e6 to c6, and here it would be very difficult for, for black to, to do anything really. Uh, so, after this knight to c4 move, we have a6 by black instead, but now bishop to d5, uh, preventing b5, so rook to a7, again introducing b5 uh, as a potential move, we have queen to f7, again creating this uh, double attack uh, towards the bishop, rook to e8, and now bishop back to f3. So what do you what do you do here? We have b5 as this is what black was hoping for, but now knight to a5, and now the c6 square is available for the for the knight. The bishop nicely defends it, and it's not uh, it's not that easy to find a move. Uh, you you don't even have to play this. You can still go for the rook e6, the c6 maneuver. And if this lands, uh, it's just over. You cannot block with the bishop due to the pin. Uh, the, the bishop slices all the way here. The knight covers these squares. It, it, it's just going to be over. So here, uh, Navarra tried king to b6 with an attack on the knight. And here, uh, we just played knight to c6. Uh, and it was in this position on move 27 that David Navarra resigned the game. And with this resignation, he is eliminated from the FIDE Grand Prix. And Wei Yi advances to the finals where he will face Yanni Pomnici. Uh, for the uh, for for the number one place in the FIDE Grand Prix, uh, Wei Yi, uh, uh, I don't know how uh, I I don't think he yeah he he cannot qualify for the candidates tournament even if he wins, uh, but as for Nepo if he wins he's definitely in the candidates tournament so we're definitely gonna check out the finals, and I thought uh, maybe uh, instead of knight to c6 I thought maybe you could force something with rook e6 uh, king captures an a3 but it's uh, uh, black gets a lot of play, and you, you would probably still win this with white, but you don't have anything forced. Otherwise, uh, we would have played it, but I just thought, uh, thought maybe some of you were interested if this works. Let's say you go rook f8, queen to h7, and now, well, you will probably win this game, but... Uh, th this is just much faster after knight to c6 what way he played uh, the rook is under attack the queen is under attack there's a triple attack on the bishop here and just uh, <clears throat> well what whatever you do it's just completely winning for white so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Kamil. Um, uh, uh, I would like to thank Kamil uh, Joinjevsky for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. And Kamil also asked if I played League of Legends. Did he somewhere read that I used to play it? I don't play it anymore. Uh, somewhere around season three, I believe I, I managed to get to gold one, uh, maybe qualifications for platinum, uh, but uh, I, I stopped playing. Uh, I still played it somewhat f just for fun, uh, but I completely stopped playing after they reworked Katarina. I mained Katarina, and uh, well, once they reworked her, I, I, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't feel like learning everything like uh, again, and then I decided I, I'm too old for that. 
so uh, I don't play it anymore. Uh, but uh, my my EU West account uh, is being used by my friends. So if you if you sometimes see a, a Timo uh, and Agan Mat or uh, you know uh, above little Timo, that that's not me. I I, I don't play that that little rat. Uh, but yeah, and also Kamal wanted to know if uh, what do I think about uh, TFT games uh, and the white, uh, well, in general, and uh, you know how they call them auto chess. I don't know why they call them auto chess. It, it doesn't really have anything to do with chess other than the fact that it's played on a board. Uh, but uh, I don't know. It, it's a catchy name, so I guess that's why they're doing it. And I haven't really tried all, all that many. Uh, I tr I tried Do Dota auto chess once. Uh, I didn't really enjoy it. And I, I've tried the uh, Hearthstone Battlegrounds now, and okay, that's um, I found that uh, enjoyable, but I haven't played it much. I played a, a few games, <clears throat> so I can't really say. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to mention that as well. Uh, so as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, FIDE Grand Prix and the Sunway Sieges. We'll, we'll have to see how Chucky does against Korobov. Uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and as always, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.